<laughs> okay, so my huge failure, 1997, uh, graduated from college, came back to DC, and I had a world-changing idea. And my world-changing idea in 1997 was that I was gonna launch a website for the DC area that would list all the restaurants in DC so anyone could find any restaurant online. Didn't exist in 1997. There was no directory of restaurants. So I launched dcrestaurants.com. Brilliant idea, great URL. In 1997, it was available. Uh, I got it, launched this directory, and uh, I had this brilliant idea that I would launch my business and do both sides of the market. One side would be the directory, so anybody could find restaurant websites. The only problem was a lot of restaurants didn't actually have websites. So the flip side of my business was that I would go to restaurants and build websites for them, right? So I bought myself a book, Teach Yourself HTML in a week. And I taught myself HTML in a week. Um, and I designed the website, design being a very loose term for what I did there. But I bought Photoshop and you know made it. Built a directory, then I went out to restaurants door to door um, in Adams Morgan. Uh, and in Georgetown, and I had my brochure, and I said, I can build a website for you, I will charge you $250 for your website, and it'll be the world's greatest thing anyone can find you. And every single restaurant owner looked at that proposal and said to me, why would anyone ever look at a website for a restaurant? <laughs> so, you know, maybe I was just too before my time, maybe I had the wrong timing, but I still thought this could work. I wasn't ready to give up yet. So I went to one restaurant, Miss Saigon Restaurant in Georgetown, some of you might know it, and I said, I'll build your website for free because I need somebody who I can pretend like paid me to do it. <laughs> Otherwise, I have no credibility. So I'll build it for free, and you'll be one of the first on my website, on my directory. So I built it, built a directory, and then I ended up landing a meeting with a guy who worked at AOL. And I had this amazing idea that we'd do a partnership Right? I'd learned about partnership in business school. Partnerships are good, we help each other. And I walked into this meeting and I had my website that was proudly purple. And uh, now I look at it and it's a disaster, but at the time I was very proud of it. And I gave him my pitch. And my pitch was, the world needs this. This is gonna be great for DC. And look, I have a website that I've already built for this restaurant. Didn't mention that they didn't pay me, of course, right? Look, I've got this over here. And I gave him the whole pitch and he said, sounds like a great idea. I can really help you. I can give you lots of attention. I can drive a lot of eyeballs there. Lots of people are on AOL. He said, but what are you gonna do for me? What do you have to offer me? And I literally sat there with no answer. I didn't even say anything. I didn't even make up anything. I just sat there, because I didn't have an answer. And I left that meeting, the worst meeting of my life, by the way, but at 22 years old, it was the best meeting I've ever had in my life. Because I learned a very valuable lesson that moment, which is you never walk into a meeting without knowing what you can do for somebody else. So that was the first moment when I figured that out, and that was my biggest failure as an entrepreneur. So I packed up my bags, left, and moved to Australia. <laughs> um, that's that one week training course, the book about how to teach yourself how to do HTML, uh, I ended up building myself a website. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna stand out, 1998. I'm gonna make my entire resume a website. I'll just build it myself, I won't have a resume. Somebody asked me for a resume, I'll say, here's the URL, check it out. So that's what I did, I moved to Australia, I lived in a hostel, ate peanut butter sandwiches for two meals a day and then went to a Chinese buffet for five bucks. Um, that was my model for three weeks straight, sucked, but you know, it saved money. Um, and I ended up landing a gig doing a three-week coding job in HTML at a, at a big South African company. That was my first big break, doing HTML coding. Now I knew I wasn't gonna do that, but the way I landed that gig was because I took the opportunity that I had, not the opportunity I wanted. That was also a big moment for me because I realized that if I was gonna wait around for the exact perfect thing, I never would have gotten my shot to break into the industry. And once I broke into the industry, that was it. I was in, because it, most industries that you'll find, no matter what industry you work in, they're small communities and people know each other. And once you're in, you're in. 